that that are that come here friendly, and we just kill them and take their stuff. Okay. So, oh, rumor has it that. Uh, oh, wait, I was supposed to show you my. Uh, the ru rumor has it that you introduced a bug into my code. We didn't introduce it. You introduced it, or left something out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this this is it. Oh, you should have gotten the brown one, man. It looks, looks no. The new one doesn't have the new oh, one doesn't come in brown. So oh. it has inflatable seats with backrests and stuff. Oh, How thick is that? Huh? Thick this is, that? is uh, it's twelve and a half feet long and f uh, just about five feet wide. Well, I mean, like punctured. Uh, it's like it has like made of polymers you're, you're and stuff that are supposed to, that are supposed to be puncture resistant. And then I got the thing to put the motor on the back. Yeah, and then we're going to, you can actually hold up to a three and a half horsepower motor. And then we're going to put a wood floor in this thing. I'd stick with a trolling motor on that sucker. Yeah, I, I probably will. You can get more power out of a trolling motor. Well, than I'm going to convince motor. my wife to let me get a big boy boat before I go. We're just going to do this enough to like get really hooked. And I'm going to catch my first fish. It's <laughs> hilarious. I got to catch a fish before I. Uh, it happened yet? Last huh? time? I only I caught a shark. Fish. All I've caught is a shark. I was on a complete. I was on my kayaks. Mm -hmm. like out there. Was talking about catching fish. Yeah. See, I, I've got. I've probably got. Um, I don't know. Maybe fifteen hours of fishing in so far. You haven't caught a fish. Have, no. But you got to keep in mind. Some of these days were pretty cold. Yeah. yeah. Where yeah. I was like practicing casting and stuff. I've gotten pretty good at casting. Okay. So you're yeah. casting with like a. I have a spinner and a bait caster. I have two spinners and two bait casters. You using lure, not hooking line. I'm using all sorts of stuff, depending on what the biggins are biting. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm using smaller lures, just hoping I catch something. <laughs> all the videos say that you know, the bigger the lure, your your uh, yeah, I have that. Uh, the bigger the lure, the, the the less bites you'll get, but the better chance you get at, at the monster. I'm going little tiny lures. I'll just take whatever will bite onto the hook. Whatever I can bring in. Tur I caught a, actually, I almost caught a goose. <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah, I did almost catch one of those. Kind of got it on its wing, but then it got pissed off. And it threw it. How, how was the shark? Through the, the hook. Shark. Huh? Catching the shark? Well, yeah, but I just like probably recovered like two weeks ago from it. <laughs> I was broken for two weeks. From reeling for a half hour, just the whole right side of my body was like, oh, like my shoulder blade felt like it was dislocated, and it was awesome. <laughs> was it worth it? Well, my wife would say no because now I'm buying all this fishing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> See, that three grand you didn't spend on mounting. Yeah, just, just tell her you're gonna use that on the boat. Right. Side. Yeah. So now I'm gonna end up getting probably like a, you know, a 17 foot or a 20 foot bass boat with a. Honking engine on it and fish 150 yeah. for it. Plus, you got all this tech, like fish finders and GPS for the trolling motor, so we can just have it take you where you want. Yeah, you can plot the route on the fish finder. It's awesome. Yeah, I know. And creepy too. It's kind of when you're on one of those boats and it, you're just. Plus, not I'll have to get control. it painted all awesome fat. Yeah. <laughs> you you show up to the dock, you just got this just total thing, you know. All right. Yeah, when you're on one of those boats that has the GPS thing and you're just cruising around, catching out, not in control. <laughs> okay, so tell me about this uh, bug you introduced. <laughs> okay, go to your uh, binary tree. All right. Was it a big bug or a little bug? Big bug. Really? Yeah. Like... We're idiots, bug, or like, like we need to. Like you forgot to design a step to rotate. Yeah, to Are you no. sure I didn't say it and then just didn't write it? No, you didn't say it. Really? Yeah, you forgot to reconnect pivot to its grandparent. We talked about grandparents. No, pivot's new parent should be grandparent and getting reconnected. Pivot pivot's new parent. parent should be. Oh right, isn't that in our algorithm? No. No. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is in the code. Oh, here it is.
Finally, set pivots parent, left child of pivot RT. Set pivots P as pivots right tree. All right, so I didn't set pivot, pivot dot parent equal to grandparent. Pivot, yeah. So I didn't reconnect these. Yeah. I distinctly yeah, remember. See, part five, you should have done it like you done. Yeah, see, I, we rewrote this a bunch of times. I wonder if I just yeah. left it out. It was an exercise for the... I did it on purpose, actually. <laughs> All right. Give me a moment. All right. So where are we... So... It should be down... Should right. should be where the grandparent is. Not well, I'm just following this real quick. So pivot grandparent uh, is either equal to null or it's equal to... Oh, this is just initially sitting pivot, uh, pivots grandparent. If it's not equal to null, then we'll set pivots grandparent's left tree to piv p. Oh, if it's equal to that, then we'll set its left tree to. Well, no, this is connecting. No, it's not. You're not connecting pivot to its grandparent. Oh, 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 oh. It's We're pivot. setting grandparent to pivot, so the grandparent knows about pivot, but it didn't know about its own parent. Yeah. Oh, got it. Yeah, right in here. Yeah. Pivot dot parent is equal to piv gp. Yeah, makes sense. You guys couldn't figure that out? We right? did. No, that's what took us five hours. <laughs> well, was our it was good for you. Um, okay, so that's in rotate left to rotate right. It tracks through all the pointers. Look at that. I love that. <laughs> Actually, that's funny because we even had the else to set pivot's parent to null. Yeah. I had to have set it and then just no. didn't write it. No, no, no. I mean, I'm, I'm still blaming myself. I'm just saying the fact that we even went and were doing anything with pivot's parent, rehooking up pivot's parent. Had to be me saying it out loud, writing this code, probably talking about uh, human centipede or something like that, getting off topic, and then we're right back in here, never connecting this up. It had to be that. All right. So now it works by adding that line? So we're good? I think so. All right. Good. All right. So now we want to actually finish our rotation. Did you add it to both of them? Yeah. Rotate left and rotate right, correct? Yep. Yes. Just that one line in both of them? Yep. It was two lines short. Come on, people. <laughs> Story of my two life. big lines. <laughs> okay. So now, uh, for the punchline involving our rotation. Last time we were debating whether there's a such thing as a trivial rotation or a, um, it's always a two-step rotation. Anybody have a final answer for me regarding that? Is there a such thing as a trivial rotation, where we only have to rotate once instead of rotate twice? Okay, when does it happen? When, so if you are going on the right tree, if the right tree's right tree is bigger than the right tree's left tree. Right tree's right tree is bigger than the... Is, I mean, like the we know our tree's out of balance, so yeah. we're going to ask that question first. We know our tree's out of balance, so now... We can ask which side's out of balance. If it's the, let's just assume in this case it's the left tree that's out of balance. The left subtree is out of balance. Under what condition do we only need to rotate once, and under what condition do we need to rotate twice? If there's no left trees, right trees, we have to rotate. Yeah. If this guy is there, we have to provide a chiropractic adjustment to our tree to put it into this state. Okay. If your tree's already in this state, you only need to do one rotation. That's the rotation from here to here. So that's if your tree is out of balance because it's it's left left, or your tree is out of balance because it's right right. Okay, and we actually said this at the very beginning of AVL trees. Okay, that's when you need a trivial uh, a rotation when it's left left or right right. You just do a single rotation among the. Your, where your pivot is one level down. Your pivot's one level down on the tree that's out of balance. So it's really easy to find your pivot in that case. Otherwise, what do we do? If our tree looks like this, that is our left tree 
has a right subtree. We don't have to look very far down. We know, since we're always updating, that our tree is always going to be somewhat balanced, right? So I don't have to, like, traverse this tree all the way down. So if I'm in a situation like this where it's my left tree that's out of balance, but my left tree has a right tree, that guy exists. That means that we now need to, you know, I like to think of it as a chiropractic adjustment. We need to bring our tree back into alignment before we can do our rotation. So notice this first move here is basically giving us a straight back. Get it? Chiropractic alignment. Oh, I love those neck pops. You get in there really. All right, so in any case, um, we need to detect if we need to do that adjustment. If we do, and we're on the left side, we do a single rotate right about which, what's our pivot? I'm sorry, a single rotate left about this guy as our pivot. Make sense? What if we're right here? Who's going to be our pivot here? This guy. So our goal is, when we are rebalancing, is to always put our tree into this position before doing our final rotation. Make sense? So don't think of it as a two-step rotation. We're really making sure we have put our tree into the position so that we can do that trivial rotation. All right. So when we get into our code here, Let's just get down to our ad, because all this happens after the ad, right? All right, so there's our ad. So at the very end, It's just our only rebalancing. So there's add. We added it. Um, here's where we ask if I'm the top level of the tree. Because we're only going to try to rebalance if we're back at the top. Right? If we're back at the top. So if I don't have a parent, that means that I am the root of the total tree. Now I ask if we are balanced. If the left tree is null, if I'm out of balance and the left tree is null, that means I only have a right tree. Okay, so this is where we're going to be looking at it. If the right tree is absent, that means we only have a left tree. Otherwise, we need to ask who has the, um, you know, which tree is, is out of balance. Once we are inside here, so let's just deal with the idea that we, it's the right tree that's out of balance. We have to ask one additional question. We need to ask, do we do the chiropractic adjustment or not? Okay, so if it's our right tree that's out of balance, what's the question we have to ask? So this is the tree that's out of balance. We have to ask, does our right tree have a left tree? Correct? If our right tree has a left tree, then what do we do? Well, we need to rotate right about which pivot? In this example, it's the pivot. The right tree is the left tree. Four, in this case, right? So right here, we're rotating right, our right tree's left tree, but that's only if. Um, this dot right tree dot left tree is not equal to null. Um, actually, this will be interesting. An inline statement is probably not appropriate here. You could make it work but you'd be just trying to save space. It's not that it's more than one line. We're only doing one line here. Oh. We're conditionally doing one thing, but we're only conditionally doing it if something's true. We don't have a yes or no. 
Okay, so we're going to say if this dot right tree dot left tree is not equal to null, that means that guy exists. Okay, so if that guy exists, let me go there. Then we need to rotate right about our right tree's left tree. After that happens or didn't happen. Okay, so this only happens if we need to provide that chiropractic adjustment. Regardless of that, what we do finally is this dot, um, we're going to say this dot right tree dot rotate left about what? Just look right here. So we're now in this position. We just did our chiropractic adjustment. So now we need to say this dot right tree dot rotate left about this dot right tree. This dot right tree. Make sense? So now we can take this exact same code. If it's our right tree that's out of balance, or I'm sorry, if it's our left tree that's out of balance, we can say if this dot left tree has a right tree, then we're going to say this dot left tree dot rotate left, this dot left tree dot right tree. And then finally, this dot left tree dot rotate right, this dot left tree. Okay? We conditionally do the chiropractic adjustment. Then we always do the trivial rotation. Okay? Depending whether our tree was out of balance in alignment or out of balance out of alignment. I guess is the, the way of looking at it. Okay. Then, if we're down here, if it's our left tree that is deeper than our right tree, we're going to do this exact same code. So left tree's max depth is greater than right tree's max depth. So that means we both have a left and a right. Uh, I think we actually mentioned this last time. This should not happen very often, this piece of code. Because it may happen early on in your tree, but because we're constantly rebalancing our tree, we should not be in a situation where we're off by more than two levels on either side. Uh, but we do need this in there for the early rotations to get our tree kind of into, into a decent balance. So this dot left, so then we need to steal this code for this dot right tree. Make sense? So perform chiropractic adjustment, then do a trivial rotation. Is that it? Our display is off. Our display is off? It doesn't show all of the trees. Well, let's do. So I have my binary tree. We're going to go 5,000. We add a bunch of things. Adding should uh, rebalance, right? Um, then we're going to say BT that is balance, true or false. BT is balanced. Let me check our. Yeah, I'm not using display right now. I'm just uh, um, adding stuff. The thing that we figured out is when you display it, since six was the first one you added, 
or like whatever the first one you added was, mm-hmm. if it gets rotated to either side and isn't the root anymore, it'll display everything underneath that, but it won't decide its parents or the other side of the tree. See, what's interesting here is max left, max right is zero. One zero one 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 two 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 three two three two three two three 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 four four. So we look like we're rotating a balance pretty pretty well there, right? And once it gets so large, it self destructs. That's what mine was doing. This is, then I started playing with it. this is called AVL tree diarrhea. We had, <laughs> we had full release right here. <laughs> oh, I'm never going to get the opportunity to say that again. <laughs> Somebody wants a login. All right. Clear cutting. Too much uh, HGH got in there. Because we're doing rotations each time. Does it at some point just get so big that it It just rotates wrong at some point? What? No, I don't think so. This has. I I wonder if this is this is the depth problem. We're not updating our depth correctly. We wrote that last time. Let's uh. Oh, yeah. How did it get to thirty something? Yeah, that's how did it go from six to thirty? Yeah. Is yeah. The, or in my case, three or three and one to twenty five and twenty five. That's awesome. Whoa. <laughs> it has to do with adding the last one. Let's uh, look at something here. Well, actually, first of all, I just ran that. And it only came up with like five. And now it came up with more. Hey, look, it's balanced. Well, yeah, 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 but it should, <laughs> it should always, it should always be balanced. <laughs> and I'm adding 5,000 things. Yeah, does it look like there's 5,000 there? Hey. So let's look at add here real quick. So we add, place it somewhere. Only if I'm at the top level of the tree do I do any rebalancing. See, that's a problem I'm having. I don't think I don't think that's right. Because well, we we would only rebalance at the at the top level because that's it's recursively adding all of them, right? Or is it no. the recursive dish one? It's the, well, it's the recursive dish so that it'll add it to this right tree. So then keep going with right tree or whatever if it's needed, or it's right tree's left tree. Right. But then after that, it comes back to the parent. So that's the only time it should run. Mm-hmm. Actually, it should run it only after, only after an add. So not at the parent, but only. At the bottom, yeah. yeah. Because otherwise, you're going to be rotating. I knew what you were telling me the whole time. I'm saying that's right. You, you got to change it to when it when the parent isn't null. Because you're not going to need to do it in the first, like, two or three, you know what I mean? Because it's not going to be, it's not possible for it to be out of balance. Well, really what we want to do is only after we actually add. But you also want to do it, like, at the place where you just added it. Right, right, right. That's what I'm saying. At the place that you just added it, which would be up here. So we know we don't have to check here. So in the else, if it's less than the payload and we don't have a left tree, create it and set uh, the parent. And then say this dot left tree dot add value. And we know, well actually, no, this is the spill through effect. Mm-hmm. So we only know that we actually added it when we get to right here. So if this is our tree, 
and we just added this guy. So we added this guy, we, we said add, we're gonna go here, add, we're gonna go here. And this guy didn't, you know, this guy didn't exist, so we went ahead and added it, set the uh, the parrot back to us. Then we're going to rotate among our child only if we're out of balance. But we still need to ask out of balance at the top level. We can't ask if this tree is out of balance. Well, no, can we? No, we can't. That doesn't give us enough information. We have to ask at the top level. Is this entire tree out of balance? If the entire tree is out of balance, then we want to rotate, but we only need to rotate among our uh, the section of the tree that we were just added to. So we have two separate questions we have to ask. So if, root, if the root that is on that is balanced, but could the actual like rotation thing not at the parent at the top level? Like anything just switches it. Well, no, see if we switch it like you're saying, we say not equal to null, we're gonna actually do more rotations than we need. Um, it may actually end up being balanced. Here, we'll just do it real quick. It may end up being balanced, but we're doing rotations every single time we're not the parent. We're checking every single time we're not the parent. Or we're just, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. No, the, 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 the problem with this is because we made the assumption that we would never, like we were making some assumptions that we don't have to look at the left because we would never be in that position. But now we are in that position because we're checking for out of balance so often. Um, so I don't think that's a problem with, with that. It's just a problem. Okay. Does a tree know about the top level root? That's the real issue here. Because we need to ask if we're out of balance in the entire tree. Because this is how we add. We're going through a spill through effect. So if the, if the payload should go to the left, if we don't have a left tree, go ahead and add it and we're done. Okay. But then, so if we're right here, we need to ask, is this entire tree out of balance? If it is, we need to rebalance about this guy's parent. So if we just added this guy, so we just added him. So let's say we're here. We just added him. We're going to ask, is this entire tree here out of balance? If the answer is yes, then what do we need to do? We need to say, I need to, well, we need to rotate left if he was the right child. Rotate left, then rotate right. And we're back in balance, correct? If we are the, so we need to have access to the root node of the entire tree so we know we can ask that top level guy um, if we're out of balance. And then we can actually make this part simpler. So if we come up here and uh, we already have a, We have a parent, but we don't have a root. Good. So we can put root back in here, but he's not a node. Now he's a binary tree. So we'll let everybody know about who the root node is. So when we add, we can update our constructor here. So our basic binary tree is going to take in this, and we're going to have a binary tree root equal to that. And we'll say this dot root is equal to root. So every single time we build a binary tree, we're going to pass the top level root along with it.
That way we can always remember the top of our tree. Okay, this is actually going to simplify our other code too. Don't refer to this nor super well explicitly. Oh, that's actually interesting. We can't pass. Uh, we'll hack it. So we originally create our tree and we call upon the other constructor. We'll pass in the root as null just so it works. And then we'll go ahead and reset the root of the entire tree to ourselves. So this is how we, you know, we did this little trick to have two constructors. That way the person who actually builds our binary tree didn't have to pass anything to the constructor here. So they can call the simple no argument constructor there, which then comes in here and calls our, um, this constructor passing it a zero and null because it doesn't know who root is because it wouldn't allow us to take this in here because it wasn't built yet. So I'll just pass in null for the root value and then explicitly set this guy's root to himself because he is the top of the tree. Okay, otherwise, every time we build a binary tree, we pass along the current root. So every subtree of the binary tree knows about the top level tree. Okay, so then down here in add, When we create a new binary tree right here, we need to pass along the root. Okay, we pass along the root. And then we set uh, the left tree's parent to ourselves, whatever. Okay, now, inside here, we can ask if the entire tree is out of balance. So now we can say, if this dot, this dot, root dot is balanced, if the entire tree is not balanced, then we need to do some stuff we know that the stuff we might need to do involves us, okay? This is where we actually just put a value. Well, we actually haven't put the value in there yet. I'm gonna move this up here just for the time being. And don't you wanna, wanna add it before you check the balance? Yeah, but I'm actually gonna add it in two different places. Couldn't you just put the if checking the root is balanced in the if this dot is empty because that will always be called after you. That is when you're like actually adding the value to the tree that you just created. Right? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, we could. And then you wouldn't need to worry about the left tree right. or the right tree. Right, right, right. We could do that. So, but we still need to build it with our root. So we can ask this question, ask if the entire tree is out of balance here. Build a new tree if we need to, make sure that new tree knows who their root is. Build a new tree if we need to, make sure that tree knows who their root is, their, their top level root. So we're still adding in the same way we added before. But now, when we finally place a value, this is where our value is finally actually placed in our tree, where the payload gets set to the value. That's where we need to ask if the top level tree is balanced, okay? If, Go ahead. No, no, this is when it finally lands. As we add something to our tree and it's trickling down throughout our tree, like that Plinko game and uh, Price is Right, yeah. Um, you know, when it finally gets placed right here, at that point we know we just added a new value, we added it right here where we are. Okay, right here where we are. Um, uh, then we can ask the question if we're out of balance. 
if we're out of balance, now we need to determine how we are out of balance. Okay? Okay, so now we're, we're hey, you get some good pops. Okay, so now we're out of balance. If we're, if we're inside here, that means we're out of balance. How do we determine which side is out of balance? Yep, yep. So really, we can go back to our, uh, do we have a rebalance method? Okay, we just do it all down here. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So if we're out of balance, then we can uh, ask some questions. Um, I'm actually, for right now, going to steal all this code. We'll update it up there. That's that. One more level. Okay, so we don't need this stuff. So we're going to throw all that in here for right now. Okay, so if we are out of balance, this is after we just added something, we know that the thing we just added is the one piece, the one thing that actually threw our tree out of balance. So we're already kind of positioned where we need to be, right? All right, so if we're out of balance, then... Well, actually, we can take out that if statement there because that's the same thing we just wrote. I'll update indenting. Okay, now we can ask... How are we out of balance? But this dot left tree no longer works. Okay? Remember, this dot is the bottom of the tree. So I'm right here. If we look at this picture here, let's say we, whoa, hello. I kind of actually like that, but that's all right. All right, so let's say we're right here. And we just got added. So we just added this four. Then we ask a question of root. Are you out of balance? He says, yes, I am. I'm out of balance. Okay. I know that I caused it, but I don't necessarily know if I'm on the left hand or the right hand side of the tree. Does that make sense? I don't know which side of the tree I'm on, okay? Because from my perspective, my entire world is right here, okay? So I can determine right off the bat if I'm on the left or right by asking the parent which side is out of balance, left max depth, depth or right max depth, okay? So we go back to our code here. First of all, if this dot root dot left tree is null, what does that mean? You know, actually, we can clean this up a little bit. Let me do this real quick. We have a get max depth, don't we? Yeah. Mm, can't really clean it up here. No biggie. All right. So we need to find out which side. So if the root doesn't have a left tree, we know we are the right tree. We, we know that we're part of the right tree. That makes sense? So I'm actually going to... We're going to rewrite some of this stuff. It'll be actually pretty much the same code, just I'm going to let it grow a little bit. So we are on the right side of the parent's tree. That's where we are in the world. Make sense? So what do we need to do next? We need to find out if we're on the right side, are we our parents' left child? If I'm my parents' left child, that means that we need to do the chiropractic adjustment. I need to crack my own neck. No, actually, I need to crack my parents' neck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 
to show you the picture of this, uh, this is the right side, right? At least you're not forking your parents. Okay. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. So this was the question we just asked. If my if the top level root has no left node, has no left tree, then we know by asking that one question that we are somewhere on the right half of the tree, all the way down at the bottom, wherever the bottom is. Make sense? But now we need to ask our parent, Mommy, am I your left child? <laughs> okay? So we need to ask our parent who the left child is. If it's us, then we know we need to do the chiropractic adjustment. Correct? About ourselves. So if this dot parent we definitely have a parent, correct? We wouldn't be in here if we didn't have a parent. If this dot parent dot left tree is equal to us, if we are our parent's left tree, then we need to do the chiropractic adjustment. We're here. We asked our parent, am I your left tree? If yes, I need to rotate right about myself. Make sense? So I'm going to say this dot rotate right on me. Then this dot rotate left on me. Why is that? So here's the, here's the first one. I'm going to rotate right about me. So I just moved into this position. Now it's me again. Make sense? So I'm going to rotate right about me. Then I'm going to rotate left about me. Otherwise, if I'm already in this position, if I'm already in this position, then I'm just going to rotate left. Uh, about me. Actually, let's think about that. I wouldn't already be in that position. If I am the guy that just got added, so forget about the forget about us being four. We're actually five in this case. If we are here and we just got added and we are not our parents' left tree, we are our parents' right tree, then we need to actually rotate left about our parent. So really we need to do this in two lines. If we're our parents' left tree, we're going to rotate right, then rotate left about ourselves. Because we actually moved in the world. Okay? We went from here. When we rotated right, we went from here to here. Then we need to rotate left about ourselves. So we stayed there. Go ahead. So this is referring to the binary tree that was most recently created? Correct. Okay. Yep. So... In this example, we just got added. So I'm four in this case. I yell up to my parents, yo, not my parent, the root node, all the way at the top. I said, yo, are you out of balance? He says, yes. Okay. Then I ask him, which side is out of balance? Parent says, it's my right side. Okay. All right, that means I'm on the right. That's all you know. Okay. Then I ask, mom? <laughs> Dad, <laughs> depending on whether it's a male or female binary tree, that's covered in the next uh, course. Um, okay, so we say, Mom, am I your left subtree? And if they say yes, so they go, Got it. Okay, this is only going to hurt for a second. <laughs> okay, at that point in time, we we say, All right, everybody, hold still. We're going to rotate to the right about ourselves. So I say rotate right, I pass myself in, I just hold on, and that's when I go, and we get into this position. Okay, so now we've, we've adjusted the spine, now we're straight. Now, we actually are now in a new position in the world. Okay, we actually have a child now. It was a horrible thing, we don't want to talk about it, but, um, you know, now we actually have a right child that used to be our parent. 
Next week, Maury Povich, you can watch the whole thing. Okay? <laughs> so, this take place in Kentucky. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is Eastern Kentucky. This is, this is an Eastern Kentucky type situation. Okay? So, so I've moved in the world now. So now that I'm here, I can say, all right, good. Now I know that I need to rotate left about myself to bring the world into the right situation. That makes sense? Which will finally then put the little subtree that we're part of, like you pointed out, the subtree that we're part of back into balance, which then should mean that the entire tree should be back into a balance since we're doing this every single time through. All right? We are only doing this if we are our parents' left tree. If we're not our parents' left tree, that means we just need to do the trivial rotation. And the trivial rotation is this dot rotate. Uh, actually, we would say. Rotate left. Let me look. Let's look at the picture real quick. So if we're if our tree already looks like this and we're this guy, and we know so so again, let's just let's play it out. Okay. Yo, are you out of balance? Yes. Which side is out of balance? The right side. Okay, I'm on the right. Mom, am I your left tree? No? Okay, I'm the right tree. Therefore, we need to ask our parent to rotate left about themselves. That makes sense? So we're going to say, if we're down here, we're going to say, Mom, go ahead and rotate left. It's going to be fine. So we'll say this dot parent dot rotate left among this dot parent. Did you have to say this dot rotate left or this dot parent? You actually could have pulled that off. Yeah, just because of the way we wrote rotate left. What we actually just evidenced here is we don't we don't need rotate left. Uh, or rotate right to take in a pivot. The pivot will always be ourselves, if we call it this way. Okay, This should work, though. But you're right. Because of the way we wrote it, it doesn't matter whose rotate left we use. As long as we pass it, the appropriate pivot, it'll work. Okay? So, if we're out of position, do a crack, then rotate left about ourselves. Otherwise... We're in position, so we'll just tell our parent to go ahead and rotate left. Okay? Similarly, if we're the left tree, that is the right tree is uh, equal to null. Should be this dot root dot right tree. This dot, yes, this dot root. If the root does not have a right tree, then we're going to ask, then we know we're the left tree. So we'll say if this dot parent dot right tree is equal to us. So this is us yelling up to our parent, am I your right tree? If the parent responds back and says yes, then we're going to say this dot rotate left about ourselves. Then this dot rotate right about ourselves. Otherwise, we'll tell our parent to rotate right about themselves. That makes sense? Now, if the root node, top level root, has both a left and a right parent, now we need them to check the depth of both sides to find out which side we're on. So we're in the exact same situation. So we'll steal this code here. Ooh, give me a second. Critical 
some lectures to upload. We got this. This is today. This is this. I think it's your hard drive. Oh, because I already have a bunch of stuff in there. I just keep uploading videos. Right. All right, back in business. Start up this. Store it on four computers. All right. So if we're down here, and we are part of the left, um, where this is the right tree. So I'll just take this code. So if our parents' right tree is greater than the parents' left tree, that's what we would be dealing with right in here. That's when we'll talk, start talking to the parent. We know we're on the right side of the tree. Otherwise, we know we are on the right side, or I'm sorry, left side. We are on the left side of the tree. So if we're down here, that means that our parent, or that this means that the root, the top of the tree, is out of balance on the left. That's the left max depth is greater than the right's max depth. Okay, therefore, we'll do the rotation there. We're on the left side. Otherwise, we'll do the rotation this way, just like we did above. Go ahead. But we also need to make it, uh, the roots left trees max depth here. The roots max in the, in the if statement of where you're calling all this. Is it gonna oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. So this dot root dot left tree, <clears throat> and this dot root dot right tree. You gotta to talk to the top level of the tree. Yep. Okay. So let's just walk this real quick. So if we're out of balance and we don't have a left tree, we know that we're the right tree, so we'll ask our parent. Am I your left tree? If I am, I'll rotate right about myself, then I'll rotate left about myself. Otherwise, we are already in alignment, we just need to do a trivial rotation, so we'll ask our parent to rotate left about themselves. Else, that means the right tree, well, else if the right tree is null of the root, if that's true, then we know we are on the left-hand side. If our parent's right tree is us, then we'll rotate left about ourselves and rotate right about ourselves. Else, we'll just tell our parent to rotate right about themselves. Otherwise, we need to ask uh, the top level root, who's out of balance? Is it your left tree or is it your right tree? If it's your left tree, now remember, we would not be in here at all if, unless we were out of balance. So we know for a fact one of these guys is greater than the other. We wouldn't be inside of this hole if structure, unless we were definitely out of balance. Okay? So down here, we're going to ask our root to look at his left tree and get the max depth, to look at his right tree and get the max depth, and see which one is bigger. If the left tree is has a maximum depth that's bigger than the right tree, then we will go ahead and set our, we'll ask the same question, if our parent's right tree is ourselves, then we'll rotate left about ourselves, rotate right about ourselves, Otherwise, just tell our parent to rotate right. Else, it must be the other side that's out of balance. It must be the uh, right side that's out of balance. So if we are our parents, left tree, we'll rotate right about ourselves or rotate left about ourselves. Otherwise, we'll tell our parent to rotate left about themselves. All right. So that logic looks solid. Did we remove everything from all the other places? Update depths is broken. Okay, so update depths is what gets called when uh, after we do a rotation, correct? Yes. Okay. So let's close this here. Let's close this here.
So let's do rotate right. So here's update left, and so we're do, update depths. So we're doing it about ourselves. Now we know when we do a rotation about ourselves, when we do a rotation about ourselves, we're only moving one position up, and then need to let both of our children know about their new position, and they won't have children. Is that guaranteed? So if we're this guy and we rotate up here, we're the one who was just added. We know that any new children we get, for instance, um, well, you'll know about them as it rotates. How it's set up. Well, we will know about them, but we know that our children won't have children. If we're rotating about ourselves, yeah. if pivot. So if this is pivot and we're rotating left off of five here. Four will become our child, okay? But we know that four will not have children, okay? So we don't need to worry about that. So really, the update is easier than we wrote it because of the way we have this guy now. Well, doesn't it that now it depends if you rotate right or rotate left, right? Well, I don't think it does. Doesn't our depth just change by one? Our depth changes by one, but then you have to change its parent's depth and then any children it has. But our parent's depth, let's go back here to this picture. If we're this guy, um, and we move up here, yeah. okay, when we, our depth just got subtracted, got one subtracted from it, correct? Yeah. And then can't we just let our children know that their depth is one greater than ours? Mm -hmm. And that's it? We know they don't have children. Isn't that an accurate statement? If I rotate this guy up here and three drops down, I know that three and five don't have kids. Therefore, I don't have to worry about that trickle effect because we're always only updating the little subtree. When we update that every time we rotate? Yeah. Because we're updating every single time we rotate, we don't have to worry about great, 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 great grandkids. And okay? we only have to worry about one level. So updating depths is going to get us, um, this is pivot.update depths. So really, we can even just remove the new depth from this. And we'll just say this.depth is equal to this.depth. Well, this.depth minus minus is good enough. So this dot depth minus minus, our depth is now one smaller than it used to be. We've moved up in the world because we're the pivot. Then if we don't, um, well, actually, if we do have a left tree, then we'll set our left tree depth plus plus. Actually, no, 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 no. We'll set our left tree's depth to be our depth plus one. Similarly, we'll set our right tree's depth to be our depth plus one. So when we tell Pivot to update his depth, he's going to subtract one from his depth. Then he'll make sure his left tree has a depth that's one greater than his, and his right tree has a depth that's one greater than his. He doesn't have to worry about any other grand, grandkids or anything like that, because we're doing this after every rotation. Change, rotate right and left. Yep, so that one, rotate right and rotate left. The very end here, when we call update depths, We're not going to pass in anything. <laughs> Do we? Get max depth. Oh, perfect. All right. Well, I think this works for update depths, right? Now we have to just we have to make all our other pieces compatible. 
All right, so there's get max depth. That's fine. Well, let's look at get max depth. Well, it can't. It has to be doing a uh, recursive call. Yeah. Can you pop down to your head real quick? Oh, I can look up later. All right, so let's look at get max depth. But we only call get max depth in, when it's in each group, yeah, right? Correct. We don't have children. Just return our own depth. If we have a left, if we don't have a uh, left child, then return our right child's max depth. Oh, oh, oh. Well, no, no, that's okay. That's okay. Um, if we don't have um, a right tree, call our left tree's max depth. Otherwise, return the maximum of left tree's max depth and right tree's max depth. So left and right will get called. It'll call get max depth on these guys. As soon as they get to a situation where they don't have children, they'll return their own depth. So the... If this we have we have an infinite loop with this right now, the problem then has to be in our rotates how we're updating our right and left child trees. We're probably not setting them back to null, so we never actually get to a position where we don't have kids, even though we should. Um, okay, so here's the the bargain I'll make with you. Somebody remind me on Thursday to start this, and I won't give you homework today. <laughs> okay. Sound good? So where are we starting? We're starting. We need to write out a note. We need to look at rotate right and rotate left and make sure that we're always nulling out the children. That make sense? That's gotta be the last piece. Because this is not a complex method, get max depth. So what's it, what's happening is after we do a rotation, we never actually inform uh uh, ourselves, whoever is the new bottom, that you no longer have kids. So it's got to be one or two lines. That's why it just keeps getting called. We never hit the, the we never bottom out. Yeah, because what's got to be happening is we have to be in an infinite loop where we're saying, right child, who is, if you, does you, do you have a, a, a child? Yes. You are my child. It's like, Luke, I'm your father, right? Right. So you got this loop that's going where a parent is calling his child's get max depth, who's calling his parents get max depth, who's calling his max. So we have a situation in here where our, both our parent and our child are each other's kids. Oh, that's so Yeah. Yeah. Again, Maury Povich on Thursday. And then no homework on Thursday. Correct. I won't give you homework on Thursday because of the because of the hackathon. I mean, the good news is, even though this guy's had some issues in it, it's good for us to debug it, and it's good for you guys to have gone through the debugging thing, but uh, until we get this working, I won't give you uh, another assignment. Sound good?